20 years ago, the pillars of web search were comprehensiveness, relevance, speed. But with the rise of social media and the need to better understand people's online behavior, in order to sell more advertising, companies wanted to collect more data, more companies optimized for personalization, engagement, and speed. And unfortunately, it turns out that inflammatory, polarizing content attracts and engages. Other features of these platforms have compounded the problem. For example, the way content looks on your phone, as well as the veil of anonymity that platforms provide their users, a lot of times can make it impossible to tell the difference between say, a peer-reviewed article by Dr. Anthony Fauci, and a miracle cure being pitched by a huckster. And meanwhile, sophisticated actors, from political consultants to commercial interests to intelligence arms of foreign powers, can game platform algorithms or artificially boost the reach of deceptive or harmful messages. Of course, this business model has proven to be wildly successful. For more and more of us, search and social media platforms aren't just our window into the internet. They serve as our primary source of news and information. No one tells us that the window is blurred, subject to unseen distortions and subtle manipulations. All we see is a constant feed of content where useful, factual information, and happy diversions, and cat videos, <laughs> flow alongside lies, conspiracy theories, junk science, quackery, white supremacists, racist tracts, misogynist screeds. And over time, we lose our capacity to distinguish between fact, opinion, and wholesale fiction. Or maybe we just stop caring. And all of us, including our children, learn that if you want to rise above the crowd, above the din, if you want to be liked and shared, and yes, go viral, then peddling controversy, outrage, even hate, often gives you an edge. It's fair to say, then, that some of the current challenges we face are inherent to a fully connected world. Our brains aren't accustomed to taking in this much information this fast. And a lot of us are experiencing overload. But not all problems we're seeing now are an inevitable project, or an inevitable byproduct of this new technology. They're also the result of very specific choices made by the companies that have come to dominate the internet generally and social media platforms in particular. Decisions that intentionally or not have made democracies more vulnerable. I don't think that our media companies, our tech companies, social media created the divisions in our society. But I do think that what has happened in our media ecosystem is exacerbating and making democracy more difficult. 
the nationalization of uh, sort of a grievance, anger-based journalism, uh, the growth of social media and technology whose product design monetizes anger, resentment, conflict, division. And uh, in some cases makes people very vulnerable, right? It, it, this isn't just words, but can lead to violence. If you are a, a, uh, a woman, if you are a person of color, if you are a trans person right now in certain parts of this country, what's said matters. A series of editorial choices are essentially being made that undermine our democracy and oftentimes when combined with any kind of ethno-nationalism or misogyny or racism can be fatal. Um, and, and that is the media ecosystem that we now are occupying. 